Welcome to St. Andrew United Church of Christ, and welcome to this time of a weekday reflection, a chance to pause in the middle of our week. Today, I stood in this space of our church building. It's one of my favorite places to be. And so I invite you into this space with me today. It's actually in the back of our sanctuary, and we set it up some time ago as a small prayer chapel place to come and pray that's in the sanctuary but but back here in this little space that's set up with different visuals and words for prayer and with the beautiful stained glass close by and so I invite you into this space today as I tell you about someone today that you have no doubt heard of many times but I hope you hear something new today it's the man who came to be known as St. Francis of Assisi. He had an experience as a young adult that changed the direction of his life. He saw a leper in the road and he prodded his horse to move on. But as he galloped by, Francis, St. Francis, as we now know him, thought that he recognized Christ in the contorted face of the outcast. Abruptly, he stopped, dismounted the horse, kissed the leper, gave alms, prayers, seated the man on the horse, and led the way to the leper's destination, allowing the leper to now ride. Before this experience, Francis said that, and this was the way he said it, that he had loathed the sight of lepers that he would look at their houses only from a distance of two miles while holding his nose. Pretty graphic description. But Francis later said of this experience, what had previously nauseated me became a source of spiritual and physical consolation. After that, I did not wait long before leaving the world. For Francis, leaving the world meant caring for lepers and praying in deserted chapels. St. Francis' very wealthy father was disgusted by his behavior. And so it eventually meant leaving his family. He was disowned by his father. And Francis ended up turning away all of his inheritance, which would have been rather substantial. And upon abandoning his own wealth, Francis determined that there must be no man anywhere poorer than he. So no matter what rags he might have been wearing, he had decided that should he meet upon a beggar that was dressed even worse, Francis would immediately remove his own clothing and give it to the beggar. St. Francis is the patron saint of animals and ecology seeing the animals and the sun and the moon and the stars as all brothers and sisters, part of God's creation. And so the poverty and the sense of looking at creation and animals the way that he did are all just a little glimpse into the life of St. Francis of Assisi. There's so much more to this man's life that I hope you might now be encouraged to look into and read more about him. Ironically, the prayer for which he is the most well-known, the peace prayer, the prayer of St. Francis, while it's been attributed to St. Francis of Assisi, it's actually been established through much research that it's not his actual writing. The peace prayer, in fact, was written almost 700 years after St. Francis had died and it was first printed anonymously by a French magazine in 1912. The prayer was, however, written in the style and theology that Francis would have used. And so I hope you won't be disappointed to know that it wasn't written until long after his death, because I think that fact speaks even more highly to St. Francis. To think that 700 years after his death, the person that he was still had such an impact on the religious world that someone wrote this beautiful prayer in the manner that St. Francis would have. 
and that whoever did write it didn't even feel the need to take credit for it. And not only has the prayer been used worldwide, it's been set to so, so much beautiful music as well, as you'll hear today. The peace prayer is full of so much meaning. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. The words and the music can take on different meaning each time you hear them. So listen and let the words all soak into your heart and mind today. Like so many prayers, this prayer can be prayed in its entirety. It's not particularly long, and so you can use the whole prayer for your prayer. And it can also be prayed 
really poignantly by using just one line at a time. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Could be your prayer. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Can you imagine how that could be your prayer for one day? Perhaps when you rise, your prayer might be, where there is despair, let me sow hope. Or where there is darkness, let me be light. Which lines might you use for your prayers this week?